We've been spending decades on particle physics just coming up with new formulas. We haven't learned anything about what the particles look like. And, and current theory says it's meaningless. I, I think this now provides a basis to start doing some real particle physics. Another question? Question. How does the physical properties of a detector come into this manifest? It appears that once you have a detector geometrically located in space, then that is the source of the reverse wave phenomenon. Okay, but, so. but let's let's say if I look at your receiving screen and I put more slits in that receiving screen. Now, as far as the diagram of the wave interference is concerned, it shouldn't matter if I had the slits on the sitting screen. That was one thing I didn't get to. Um, as I would have shown if we got more, more further with the Feynman diagrams, if you have an elastic scattering, whatever coherence the incoming flux has, it will carry over. So it'll, it'll maintain the same phase and it'll carry that same that same internal vector. If you have an inelastic scattering, where, uh, um, say, uh, there's a, a photon wave coming in here, so that so that as this particle scatters, it emits a photon as well as continuing to travel over. It then turns out that the only diagrams that contribute are ones where the coherence comes from the target, not from over here. Um, so the 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 um, the phase and the internal vector carried are going to come from the target and not from the detector. So what this says in effect is that the origin of any mutually coherent wave in different directions is always going to be where there's an inelastic scattering. So there are inelastic scatterings of waves going on here, which is why when the particle gets there, it scatters inelastically, emits a particle photon, and that's what you observe. Here, if the scattering is elastic, there's no photon or anything emitted, so you don't observe the particle there. And in the double slit experiment, you don't observe it when it goes through the slits. You only see it when it arrives at the screen, because that's where the inelastic scattering is. Now, if you cut more slits in the screen, then the wave would actually be coming from another screen behind it. And those waves would then be able to interfere when they came through the new set of slits. So it really corresponds perfectly to quantum mechanics. The, the place where the wave originates is always the place you're going to observe the particle. In between, the waves scatter elastically and the particle following the universe will scatter elastically. So the, 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 the theory of observation of quantum mechanics is reproduced by this, but without the, the, the measurement theory and the wave collapses. In the, in the back over there. I'm just trying to come to grips with what the uh, wave might look like um, the wave path might look like the particle will traverse along. What might its uh, spatial extent in the traverse direction be? I mean, how localized is it along the path? Um, that's a question that I'm not sure is answerable without more research. Um, I don't know whether... It, my, my sense is that this should be a continuum type of theory and that any line along uh, in the continuum should be independent. In effect, you get what looks like a, a wide wave just because you have a common source of the flux in the various different angular directions with the same phase, so it adds up to look like a wave coming out in multiple directions. Whether, whether space should be viewed as uh, having gradations, I, that's not my sense. That sort of implies space is a real thing, which it is not. Um, so the, the point is, if you have any real detector anywhere, it's by the very nature of inelastic scattering wave processes, it's going to be emitting waves in all directions from any one point that are mutually coherent. So these fluxes in all the independent directions are always going to look like a wave with some width to it. But remember, the particle is always going on a straight line along the line of the flux that's coming in its direction. What, what, what property of that flux distinguishes it from the flux that the differential distance from it in some direction? Is it its amplitude the greatest? Or, um, well, it wouldn't have to be distinguished if it's the same line of flux that's continually emitted by the detector, so it 
it will just follow that same line right to the detector. If there's a different apparent amplitude, it would be only because the lines of flux are spreading out from one another. So it would be a sum over lines that would give you a reduced, a reduced amplitude. Uh, very simple pictures. Um, how does the particle know that a particular, you know, a particular path that has flux that it can travel on is distinguishable from a neighboring spatial path? Well, because the flux on in, that it follows will be one that has the same internal vector. And the particle will be carrying a similar vector, so it follows a, way, a flux with that vector, as long as there is one with that vector. Now, if you, if you move the detector, you're going to get a different flux, and the particle is going to have to jump in some way to one of the new flux lines. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that answers your question or not, but... Yes. You specify the type of interaction between the two vectors. What kind of interaction? Um, basically, what happens is the following. A particle carries with it information corresponding to the situation where it was generated to begin with. So, um, Maybe the best example is with, with Bell's theorem, where two particles are created. You can think of each particle as carrying information about the state of the other particle when they were created as a pair, the state of the waves that came in from the other direction. Now when it experiences new waves, it jumps into one of them as if those new waves had actually come all the way back to where the particle started. In other words, it takes the information of the waves from the other side and carries it with it and then does the same thing in response to these new waves that it would have done if the new waves had actually arrived at its original source. So by that mechanism, any time it jumps, it jumps into exactly the kind of configuration it would have been in if the new wave had actually made the whole trip. Now, of course, if the wave scatters in between, this new kind of flux may have scattered differently, in which case you're going to get a delayed choice type situation. And in fact, maybe some experiments of that kind could be designed that would distinguish this theory from quantum mechanics. I, I haven't been able to figure one out yet, but um, in every case I've been able to think of, if the particle does jump in the way I described, it'll always, it'll always uh, do exactly what quantum mechanics predicts. Yes? As I understand it, uh your theory does indeed do something that uh, quantum mechanics doesn't do, that is, it can treat gravity. I thought I heard you say that. Well, that means, you now, I mean, the standard theory collapses when the gravity force becomes significant, mm -hmm. which means that when you try to trace back to the Big Bang, you give up at 10 to the minus 43 seconds. Your theory should be able to then take you all the way back to the very beginning, uh, which would be altogether new and very interesting. Well. Probably mathematically it would, except, well, uh, I don't want to sound even more controversial today than I do already, but I, I guess I don't believe the Big Bang happened. I don't think that's the way the universe originated. <laughs> but, um, um, uh, but, but it should work. I mean, I think, I think this theory does... Exactly. I think gravity, will, gravity can just be integrated with this exactly like any other kind of interaction. And... That's one of the beauties of this. It, 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 it unifies all the forces. If, it, if you can really do that, you're, uh, you've solved a tremendous problem. If you can't do that, I don't know where you are. <laughs> well, that, that's going to be tied up now with issues of renormalization, and that's tied up with, with research I have ongoing. That do you in need order... renormalization? I'm sorry, what? Do you need renormalization? No, you actually don't. But what I do need is better models and pictures of what these fluxes look like in order to, in order to see more clearly um, exactly why the renormalization is there in current theory and so forth in terms of the fluxes. So you don't need renormalization. I mean, this is a dramatically different theory. We are not talking about a new interpretation of quantum mechanics. We're talking no, about a whole new theory. It's definitely not a new interpretation because the fact that the waves move in reverse has very different physical consequences. That's an important point. I'm not just reinterpreting it. Just reinterpreting it wouldn't fix it. I think we have enough proof now that a reinterpretation would just change around the contradictions. It wouldn't fix it. A new theory. Yes. 